if you are demoing an application, if you're doing a presentation, there are times you want to show you the keys you are pressing on the screen. Now, over on the Xorg side, we have Screen Key. Screen Key is a really well made application, it's basically feature complete, and it's getting a little bit of minor development, but nothing to really write home about. But Screen Key, because it relies on the Xorg API, only works on Xorg. And a while back, I did a video on an application called W Show Keys. This works on Wayland, but that project is kinda half finished. A lot of the functionality just doesn't really work. And when I did that video, a lot of people told me about another application called Show Me The Key. So here we are again, with another what I've been dubbing a friendly keylogger. Now, one of the big differences between this W Show Keys and Screen Keys is right now I'm using Show Me The Key over on Xorg, and it works over on the Wayland side as well. I'll explain how it's doing that in just a bit, but know that it's going to work exactly the same regardless of what you are using. Now, Show Me The Key can be run in two separate forms. We have the GUI form, which is a GTK interface, the one you were just seeing, but there is also a CLI interface as well. Now, if you try to run the CLI interface, it's going to do this. It's going to say, I don't have permission to do this. This is because it needs to be run with sudo. So if we go and run it again, now it's going to start printing all of the information directly to the screen. So it's actually going to show us more information than we'd see on the GUI interface. So not only do we see the key we are pressing, we are seeing the device it's from, when it was pressed, and even the state it's currently in. Now, even though the CLI form is great for parsing, it's literally just a bunch of JSON objects, this isn't the way you're generally supposed to be running the application. Not only do you probably want to see this information, you know, neatly in a GUI, this is actually supposed to be the back end for the application. This is here because of the way that Wayland works. So when you try to run this over on Wayland, on many of the compositors, it's not actually going to work straight away because it still needs to go and open up this backend with root privileges to make sure it can actually access what it needs to access. But you can't open up a GUI on Wayland with sudo. The standard way to address this is with pkexec, and GNOME and KDE handle this exactly like they should. They have a GUI pkexec agent available, whereas if you're using a more minimal window manager like setup, like a Sway or whatever, things like that, they are not. So pkexec is going to fall back to the CLI option, and I did a video on this, the CLI option has been broken for many, many years. So there's two ways to get the GUI working properly on Wayland. One, install a graphical pkexec agent. Go and check out my video on how to do that if you don't know how that works. And the second way is if your user is in the wheel group, then the password prompt will not be given to you. So depending on the distro you're using and how your user was created, that may or may not be a problem full stop. So once you've got everything set up and you can actually run the GUI application, when you first run it, it's going to look like this. Now, not this big because I'm using a Tyler, more like this. So it's not really the most well-designed interface, but it certainly does the job. This button up here that does not have a tooltip, this is going to start up the application. So we start typing now, it's going to show us what we're actually typing. The pause button here isn't going to pause what you have on the screen. So if we go and pause it now, it is going to disappear. But while it is paused, when you type, then it's just not going to be shown. So if you want to like, I don't know, demo a part where you're typing in a password, for example, you might not want to show the password you are typing. The display mode here is going to change whether you're using the human readable form like these keys here, for example. Uh, I just changed my layout. I didn't mean to do that or if you're using the raw layout, which is basically going to be the key sim names, which may be what you want to see depending on what you're doing. I generally prefer the compose form just because it's much easier to see in a demo. And the timeout is how long the text is going to stay on the screen. Right now it is one and a half seconds, but if we go and change this down to something like 100 milliseconds, that is 0.1 seconds. So it's going to basically disappear straight away. That's not really that useful, but what might be useful is changing it down to zero. Zero basically means it always stays on the screen. 
And if you want to show a bunch of key presses or you want to start talking like I'm doing now, maybe that might be useful. Also, unlike, say, Screen Key, for example, which is making use of the overlay functionality available in Xorg, this is actually just a regular window. It's a regular floating window. I can move it around basically anywhere I want. That does mean that in a tiler like this, it does get kind of weird because it's like covering a bit of the window, but the window isn't moving around it. Also, if I move my cursor over it, it highlights it, but this stuff can be avoided by changing out the window rules in my window manager. But one thing you cannot change on the window itself is the window size. If I try to resize this, it doesn't let me do so. The only way to resize it is in the control window itself, and it can't be done when the display window is being shown. Let's say I want to change this down to something like a thousand pixels. If we now go and rerun this, it is not going to be smaller. I don't know why it didn't change actually. There we go. Sometimes it can be a little bit weird like that. Now on Xorg, it's going to behave like you'd expect a window like this to behave. So when you go between your different desktops, it's automatically going to be following you. And if you go and say focus on another window, it is always going to be on top. But on Wayland, that can't be done as just like a general thing on every single desktop. Every compositor, every compositor base handles it a little bit differently. So this is the reason why this clickable area exists. So over on GNOME, if you right click on this, you should be able to select something called always on top and always on visible workspace. And then on KDE, you should be able to do the same thing, but select all desktops and keep above others. But if you're using something like Sway, for example, we can just go and set this up with a window rule. The window rule is pretty simple, and I took this straight from the GitHub. So for the window, titled Floating Window, show me the key, which is the name of this current window, Floating Enable, make sure the window is always going to be floating. On Sway, if you don't do that, it is going to tile out of the box, and that's going to look a little bit weird, especially because it's not resizing, it's just this really big tile breaking everything else. And then Sticky Enable. Sticky basically means it's going to follow you everywhere you go. Now, I can't speak for any of the other desktops. If you're using River, Wayfire, LabWC, anything else out there, I don't know how exactly you would set up those window rules to get the behavior working like it should. But if your system has window rules available or some sort of equivalent system, there's probably some way to do so. Just go and refer to your desktop's documentation. While Show Me The Key basically does exactly what it needs to be doing, the one drawback it has is it doesn't really have anything in the way of customization. I don't need to see this clickable area here over on Awesome or over on Sway. I don't use it. It is only there for KD and GNOME. I would like to hide it. I would like to maybe modify the colors, maybe not have this border around the text, things like that. But that can't be done. It just is what it is. You can modify the timing, you can use raw mode, and that's pretty much it. Now, if you've used Screen Key, you may be wondering why this needs root access and that doesn't. Well, I mentioned this earlier. Screen Key relies on the Xorg API, the X11 API, which basically lets it be a keylogger without needing root access. Over on Wayland, though, that can't exactly be done. You can get access to key presses when a window is focused, but only when a window is focused. But there is a way to get around this. Just ignore the APIs altogether and then read the inputs directly from lib input. And that's exactly what it's doing. It is basically just reading the inputs directly from the devices making those inputs. This is not something you want every application to be able to do, so it's hidden behind at least a little bit of security. That security can be overcome by just being in the wheel group, so it's not like most users are actually protected from it, and if someone actually wanted to make a Wayland keylogger, doing so would actually be pretty easy. Now, even though it does have a couple of disadvantages, if I'm going to be doing stuff on both Wayland and Xorg, it might just be best to drop screen key altogether and then just rely on show me the key. It's not as nice of an interface, but it does everything that I need it to do. So if you have a need for a friendly keylogger, 
let me know how you're going to approach it. Do you make use of show me the key already? Do you use screen key over on Xorg? Or do you just make something yourself? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go to get my Patreon subscribers there on Bureau Pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.